Hi there. Uh, in this session we're going to be looking at uh, creating roles within Mission Control. So the role is a really important object inside Mission Control and it's uh, it's actually the record that uh, identifies who the person is that's going to be performing uh, a particular function within a project. So we can uh, we can create roles uh, directly from the Mission Control console as, uh, as, as shown here. So we simply uh, click on create to to jump in and be able to create a new role. So just before we do that, uh, let's just talk a, talk a little more about a role. So the role is the project resource. It's the person that's going to be either a project manager, they might be responsible for delivering an overall milestone, they might be taking responsibility for, for owning an action, or they might be simply contributing to, to help deliver a particular action on a project. So the, the role can link to a Salesforce user or it can link to a Salesforce contact. So as an example, if this is my uh, Salesforce system, I've got a Salesforce license. So my role record within Mission Control would link through to my Salesforce user record. However, I might also have a client that I need to assign ownership to. So I don't have, uh, I don't have a Mission Control license for them, but I want to assign ownership of an action. Um, so for example, I might need to get them to approve some designs for a new website. So I've got them in Salesforce as a contact so I can actually link, create a role record and link it through to their uh, contact record uh, in Salesforce. So that's what I'm going to do here. So this example here is uh, currently going to looking for a user but I'm going to switch that to look for a contact within Salesforce. So you'll see that changes the, the field that I'm looking up. So what I'm going to do is search for my client so now I've selected him, this role will link through to his contact record and it will pull in his email address uh, so I can send him notifications. So I'm going to put in a job title, I'll also enter how many, week, uh, how many hours per week they're available. So if this was a, a genuine resource on my project team, I would, uh, I would want to put in however many hours per week they'll be working. Uh, this field here is important because that drives the, uh, the, the utilisation and the capacity on the, uh, on the scheduler. The timesheet approver there, so that's the person that, you know, if we're, if we're running uh, timesheet approvals uh, on the project or holiday approvals, this person here would be responsible for approving those time logs and holidays for Joel. Over here we can specify both the billing rate and the cost rate that we are applying for that person, so you know what we're charging the client for, for this person to do the work, and uh, over on uh, the cost hourly rate is what we're paying that person to do the actual work. So in terms of the notifications and settings, obviously we need to have this person active, uh, otherwise if they're not active, uh, their, their role record will not be available uh, in Mission Control to be able to assign actions to. And the, uh, the Manage Timesheets function, uh, if we have that set to true, that means they're able to go to the timesheet and actually look at other people's timesheets as well as their own. Over on the right hand side if you're, uh, if you're actually using the daily digest within Mission Control uh, for, for Joel to actually receive this digest he will need to have this, this box set to true and uh, similarly if we're, if we're looking to push out the dependent action notifications um, we'll, want to, we'll want to have that set to true as well. Carrying on down we set the expense approver so again who's the, who's the role record in Mission Control that will be approving any expenses submitted by Joel so I'll just select uh, that record there and then what would the mileage rate be that we're, we're going to pay uh, Joel if, he, if he's travelling for, for business. So that's, uh, that's uh, Joel's role record ready to create so we could click save at this stage however we can go down and build on his profile a little further by adding him to teams and adding him to skills. So I can say okay well I'm going to add him to, uh, to a couple of teams here so I'm just going to add a, a few extra rows to the list and what I'm going to say is he's on the clients team and he might be on the marketing team and he might be on the development team. So that's his team membership done. Now what I do is go down to the skills assignment and start building out his skills profile. So again, just add as many skills uh, assignment records to the list that I need. And what I can do now is filter down and say, right, I'm looking for a certification. 
that will filter the list down and only show me skills that are have a type of certification so I can then add the skill again it needs to be active uh, I can set the proficiency if applicable when that might expire and again for for the skills based financial costing on a project we can assign skills for uh, so we, we can assign billable and cost hourly rates against individual skills so if we're wanting to say you know if, uh, if, if Joel is using a specific skill we're going to be charging him at a, at a different rate to the rates specified here now if we're saying when he is using this skill we'll just leave those blank and then that will default to these rates so just carry on building out that profile Okay, once I've built out that profile I can simply click save and now Joel's record is created inside Mission Control and we're ready to assign actions to him.